Good morning. Brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God. Hello. Hi. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version, and please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures that we are going to be looking at. Check me out in the scriptures. Keep me accountable. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm telling you the truth, okay? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. But before we, before we get into the scriptures, there is something that I do have to address with you. Okay? Very quickly. Today, in the year of our Lord, 2022, it is September the 16th. Today marks the fourth day that the video that was uploaded on the 12th, Monday, today is the fourth day of that video being uploaded. And as YouTube does for channels that they are keeping an eye on, today on the fourth, this is the fourth day that the video from Tuesday, uh, from Monday the 12th have been uploaded. Today, at 9.30, between 9.30 and 10.30 p.m. Central Daylight Savings Time, YouTube is going to do something to that video that was uploaded Monday the 12th. Okay? That's what they do. It's a four-day cycle. I don't know why they do this. I don't know. Uh, I got YouTube's attention because of the videos on Islam that um, the Lord had me to do. Very similar a while ago where uh, the Lord had me to do videos against some of the ridiculous charismatic stuff uh, that got YouTube's attention. Nonetheless, nonetheless, today marks the fourth day that the video from Monday the 12th half has been uploaded. And like I said, at between 9.30 and 10.30 Central Daylight Savings Time, California time, I think that's between 7.30 and 8.30 p.m., their time in California. YouTube is going to do something to that video. Whether they're going to remove views, remove comments, remove likes or dislikes, I don't know. Remove it altogether, I don't know. But today, the fourth day of the video that was uploaded Monday, uh, between 9.30 and 10.30 p.m., uh, my time here, Central Daylight Saving Times, they're going to do something to that video. And I'm telling you this because if the video that was uploaded on Monday disappeared from the channel, I did not remove it. Number two, if it's removed, that means that YouTube has done something to this channel, Accountable KJV. And if YouTube does something... Videos will then be uploaded on the backup channel, least of all fellowship, temporarily. Okay? So, if you do not see an upload on this channel by the 20th of this month, which would be Tuesday, Lord willing, if you do not see a video uploaded by the 20th, and if you see the video that was uploaded on the 12th disappear, okay, know that YouTube has done something to the channel and I will temporarily upload videos on the Least of All Fellowship channel. And just to let you know, on that channel, uh, which is the backup channel to this one, um, there are no comments on the videos, just so you know. I do have quite a few people blocked on this channel. Yes, I do. Uh, mainly two people, uh, one from England and one from Canada, who have a whole bunch of, between the two of them, they got over like 500 channels. And also those who uh, like to link the pornography, link sites or whatever and stuff like that. Um, I don't got time with that on the other channels, so I just removed all comments. Okay? All right? But um, I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. If anything happens to this channel, um, uploads will be on the Least of All Fellowship channel for the time being. Okay? So just wanted to bring that to your attention. One second, please. Okay, now, see, first five minutes had to address that. Now, now, 
You and I as the Church of the Living God, we want the redemption of the purchased possession to happen, oh, five minutes ago. Ten minutes ago. An hour ago. A day ago. A week ago. A year ago. We want to get out of here. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And as I like to remind myself and others, well, if the redemption of the purchased possession happened yesterday, then those souls that are saved by our Lord Jesus Christ today, they would have been in some, they would have been in a pickle, wouldn't they have been? Yeah. Think about the ones that the Lord will save today that he didn't save yesterday. And also, too, we as the Church of the Living God, when we start going through some, some affliction, some trouble, it's like, oh, Jesus, how long, how long? Right? And it's like, any time, Lord. And hence, people who, these Christians who like to glorify themselves and save themselves by what they do, so they, well, I, you know, I get to prove to you what a great Christian I am by what I do. Or I get to prove to you how a great Christian I am because I'm going to be going through the great tribulation. I did. Yeah. But we got to remember something, brethren. We have to remember something. It's not about us. It's not about us. Our Lord gives a very, very good response onto something of this nature. John chapter 12, verses 23 on to verse 29. This is Jesus, you know, the king entering into his kingdom. Not to rule and reign at this time, obviously, but the king, our Lord Jesus Christ, going into the city of the great king, Jerusalem. Okay? And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit much fruit yes um, you have to there has to be a death in order for you to be truly born again converted saved you have to die to yourself and to your self-righteousness so many Christians like to skip over all that nasty repentance stuff which they call a work it's nonsense the repentance is you're repenting of you you you're turning away from you I'm a good person. No, you're not. There's no such thing. Okay? There has to be a death before you can be born again. Okay? And our Lord, right here, verse 25, He that loveth his life shall lose it. How so? Well, I'm a good person. I'm saved because I just believe. You lost it. And what have you gained? You've gained the world. You've gained Christianity. You've gained a idea. You've gained nothing. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Now, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve, him, serve me, him will my father honor. Right here, verse 27. One, one second. Verse 27. Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? You, you looking at this? But for this cause came I unto this world. Hold your place there. Go to Matthew chapter 26. 
Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, we want verses 52, not Mark Brad. We want verses 52 on to verse 56. In the garden, in the garden of Gethsemane. Then said Jesus unto him, speaking to Peter about how he lopped off Malchus's ear, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. You think you fight fire with fire and fire winds, you're going to die by fire. Uh huh. Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? That's a lot of angels. Okay? But, how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? That thus it must be. Jesus didn't preach the scriptures. Jesus didn't say anything about living by the scriptures. But yet, right there he says, But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? <laughs> yeah, watch out for those like, Bible is mark of beast. Those idiots. Okay, you watch out for those types of people. Okay, um, Jesus said right there, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? The scriptures must be pretty important, huh? Very important. He has elevated his word above his own name. He staked everything on the scriptures. And then you got twits, like Bible is mark of beast. The Jesuit cemeterians with their textual criticism. Yea, hath God said, people. Yeah. Yeah. In that same hour, Jesus said to them, Jesus, in that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hand, laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Just like it says in the book of Zechariah, I believe that is. Okay? Go back to John chapter 12. Okay? Verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have, I have both glorified it. I will glorify it again. Here's how I believe it's going to be for the redemption of the purchased possession. Verse 30, or verse 29. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said, an angel spake to him. Some people heard what, the, what was said, and others heard a thunder. So when the Lord calls us up before the time of Jacob's trouble, at, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the Lord is going to call each and every single one of us, I believe, by name, at the same time. He can do that. He's God. And we, the church of the living God, we're going to hear our name. Brad, come up hither. Okay? And your name at the same time. Others are going to hear, they're going to hear it. But they're going to hear a thunder. They're not going to hear their name because they're going to be left behind. That is what I believe how it's going to be for the redemption of the purchased possession. That is what I believe. Okay? That is what I believe. You can, I, And I base this upon Scripture. But this is what I believe. This is very telling. Verse 29. This is how I believe it's going to be for the redemption of the purchase possession. We're, going, we're all going to hear our names. At the same time. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Okay? Brad, come up hither. Sasha, come up hither. <laughs> Philip, come up hither. <laughs> Alexander, come up hither. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> okay? Yes, we're going to hear our names all at once in the twinkling of an eye. Yes. They're not going to hear that. They're going to hear something else. That's what I believe. But the whole point that we looked at this, verse 27, now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this cause came I unto this hour. Esther, Esther, chapter 4. Esther, chapter 4. Esther, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Esther, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. 
Then Mordecai commanded to Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Okay, and what did we just read in John chapter 12? <laughs> Verse 25, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Uh, verse 13 again. The Mordecai commanded to Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth? Whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Who knoweth? How often do you read Romans 8.28? And this uh, a dear brother, young brother, um, who the Lord has praised the Lord, opening his understanding. Because so many can quote this verse. But it's until you live it that you begin to truly understand it. Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called, who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church and living God, according to, look at that, don't look at me. Look in the scripture. Look at that. His purpose. His purpose. Not your purpose. His purpose. Hmm. These disgusting Christians. I'm not a Christian, by the way. I'm not a Christian. I'm of the church of God. Church of the Living God, okay? I'm not a Christian. Thank you very little. But you know what Christianity and Christians do? They trivialize the truth of Scripture. Here's a good example. Here's a good example. I can't tell you how many times I've heard from some of these vomitous Christians God has a plan for your life. <laughs> Is that true? Yes. But see, but see, when the Christian tells you that, what is it? What is the end that justifies the means to glorify you, to lift you up? What they are saying, God's got a plan for your life. What are they saying? They say, well, God wants you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. God doesn't want to leave you in squalor. He wants to bless you. God's got a plan for your life. And he does. But see, when the Christian that comes out of the church building, the Jesuit government-controlled church building, tells you that, it's to lift you up, to puff you up, because it's said in a fleshly manner. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called, not because you say you are, but because you went to the Lord on his terms, not your own. You know, you don't boot the door out the way. Okay? To, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And see, when the Christian says, God's got a plan for your life, it's according to your purpose. Because the whole world revolves around you. Look at some of these Christians who say that everybody watches their videos and that all of... Christianity revolves around them like they're the only ones. Look at them. It's all about them. According to his purpose. According to his purpose. Romans 14, verses 7 on to verse 9. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto ourselves, to the Lord. 
And whether we die, we die unto who? The Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Not our own. We're bought with a price. Your life doesn't belong to you anymore. Oh, that's Lordship salvation. Yeah, you go live your life according to your own dictate. And then when you wind up at the great white throne of judgment, yeah, because you were never saved in the first place, yeah, God doesn't hold a gun to your head forcing you to live according to Scripture. No, He doesn't. That would make you a robot. You need to make the right choices. Okay? But see, He saves you and seals you until the day of redemption. How you serve Him reflects Him. Okay? Your life doesn't belong to you anymore. Verse 9, For this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be both Lord both of the dead and the living. Those who are dead in him, who died, okay, that are in him, died as martyrs for the church of the living God, for our Lord Jesus Christ, and the living. Okay? And he will be the judge of those who are dead, walking in their trespasses and sins. He is your judge. He is your God, whether you like to admit it or not. It's not according to us. And how do you know whether whatever your situation is, dear brother, dear sister, how do you know that the Lord hasn't put you in that position for such a moment as that you are experiencing right now? You don't know. You don't know. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, just one verse, the very last verse, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Not in vain. <laughs> have you felt that? Hey, hey, brother, have you felt that some of what you've done is in vain? Well, I don't see the fruit. I don't see the fruit. You know, for you to see the visible fruit, that's a luxury. Okay? That's a luxury for you to see today. That's a luxury for you the one who's doing the work, for you to see it. It will be seen by others, but for you to see it, that's a luxury. A lot of the work that you will, that, that you will do as a church of the living God, number one, it's not in vain. Number two, you won't know about it until you get to the judgment seat. You don't know what your witness, what your testimony by living according to the scriptures has, has been used of our Lord in the sight of others. You don't know, brother. You don't know of your testimony onto the lost people that witnessed you in that situation. How you handled it. How you behaved as a child of God living according to the scriptures. You don't know what that testimony did unto that lost person who saw that. Hmm? Example, Stephen. When he was stoned, the people laid their clothes at the feet of who? Saul, who would become Paul. You're going to tell me that that witness, that testimony, Lord, charged them not with folly as they were throwing stones at Stephen? It's like, Lord, forgive them for this. He died like that. He died saying, Lord, lay not this uh, folly to them. And he died and gave up the ghost. He fell asleep. Saul saw that. Did Stephen know? <laughs> he had a little bit of other things going on at that moment, didn't he? But did he know? Did he know that what how the Lord would use Paul? No, he didn't. You don't know, brother, sister. You don't know 
the effect of your testimony. That's why it's so important that you sp that your lives be sanctified according to Scripture. And Lord willing, whether here uh, or on Least of All Fellowship, that's going to be the next video, talking a little bit about sanctification. Not today, okay? But you don't know. You don't know. Your testimony by living according to the Scriptures, you don't know how the Lord's going to use that in someone else. You don't know. And if you do find out about it, that's a luxury. That's a luxury. You got these Christians who boast about, well, through this ministry, thousands. Of, oh, shut up. And you know what they do? You know what they do all the time? Well, Paul did it. A, a lot of these Christians will justify their sin, justify their pride by falling back. Well, Paul did it. Uh, yeah, yeah, Paul, yeah, he did. But you know what? Especially, uh, go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, okay? This, this really irritates me. Yes, Paul is our example for today. But a lot of these Christians will do things and then immediately fall back. Well, Paul did it, so I can do it. Paul did it. And they will come at that, they will use that as the first thing to uh, justify themselves. As, look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Am, not, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Uh, Paul saw with his own eyes Jesus Christ. Hence, an actual scripturally based apostle, not one chosen by men. Okay, and the apostles that are chosen by men, uh, Matthias or Matthias or whatever, in Acts chapter one. Well, where do you read about him after that? <laughs> you don't. Okay, but Paul saw the Lord with his own eyes. Okay, are ye not? Are not ye my work in the Lord? People are the fruit. People are the fruit. What, what are some of these ites like? Look, look at some of these Catholic coadjutors. Look at their fruit. Look at how they behave. Look about how a young uh, jerk is being manipulated uh, like a marionette by his um, elder master. Look at their fruit. How they behave, how they conduct themselves. Look at some of these ites. Hmm? Hmm? Look at them. Look at them. Okay? See, that's how you can see fruit a lot of the times. There is other fruit that you do not see. And the one who is doing it, that's a luxury if you get to see it. Okay? I don't know truly the extent of the fruit that the Lord will bring to fruition through what he has called me to do. I know of a few. I know of that much, and that's a luxury. And praise the Lord that he keeps it from me because I have a pride problem like some other people do. But yet they're so proud and arrogant they won't admit it publicly. And won't say, well, yeah, I struggle with pride daily. They'll make a glib reference to it. Oh, man, I, I own up to it. Yeah, and, and I struggle daily with it. And you know what? It wins sometimes. Okay? Okay? But see, if the Lord may allowed me to know the extent of the fruit that came from him calling me to do what I do, okay, it would go right to my head. And you, you see so many of them. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say who. You can see a whole bunch of what happens when people are privy to their fruit, and it goes right to their head. Not gonna name anybody. Don't name them in the comment section either. Okay. And verse two. If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. And see, well, Paul did it. He boasted about his numbers. Yeah, but verse 3. My answer to them that do examine me is this. 
See, Paul let a lot of things roll off his back. He had grace. But after constant barrage, constant, 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 then he's like, okay, on so, uh, several uh, occasions, it's like, okay, you've compelled me to speak like a fool who says in his heart there is no God. Only a fool boasts himself. Like so many Christians do. God's got a plan for my life. Yeah, he does. But it's according to his purpose, not yours. Not yours. What if the Lord wants you to be poverty stricken? No, God wants me to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Oh, and Jesus, God manifest in the flesh, the Father who had nowhere to lay his head, he was basically homeless, and God wants you to have a mansion. Paul, who was stone, who, who said to have food and rain and therewith be content, but yet God wants you to have a Ferrari and have multitudes of lands with your little mini castles on them, right? And your swimming pools, right? Yeah. Yeah. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 1 on verse 8. See, I believe, I believe in the doctrine or the imminent, thank you, return of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, I do. I believe that the Lord could appear, uh, could appear, excuse me, could call us up at any moment. Could he have, would he have done that during the time that the scriptures were being written? Uh, well, blah, 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 obviously, no. Obviously, no. Okay, in Acts chapter 7, he was standing uh, because if the Jews had accepted the gospel, things would have been different, but it was in Scripture that it wasn't going to happen that way. That's why he was standing. But a lot of things had to transpire first, okay? We see today the technology for the mark of the beast. Israel, once the redemption of the purchased possession happens, Israel, as being financially backed, by that man of sin, the son of perdition, who will have the deep pockets of the Vatican, they'll get that third temple up just like that. Okay? Just like that. I truly believe, yes, that the Lord could call us up at any moment. Absolutely. It could be a number of years yet, yes, but I believe that it could happen at any moment. Absolutely, amen. 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 Okay? But see, what happens is, when you and I start suffering, we get we tend to get a little selfish about it, don't we? Huh? Don't we? And hence, the heretic will say, you're looking to escape. Well, the scriptures tell us that the body of Christ is going to be redeemed for, uh, before the time of Jacob's trouble. And, you know, they go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, they read unto 1, unto verse 4, and yes, this is true. Even His Holiness from Maine has made this point. They stop at verse 4. They do. They don't. You got to keep reading, son. You got to keep reading in 2 Thessalonians, where it says, He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The Lord is omnipresent. He ain't going anywhere. Who's the He that's being taken out of the way? The body of Christ. And then shall the wicked be revealed. They stop at verse 4, okay, in 2 Thessalonians. Yes, that's true. I've encountered that myself. Yes, that's true, okay. You got to keep reading, son. The body of Christ gets redeemed, caught up first. Then that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. Okay, you got to keep reading, okay. There is the redemption of the purchased possession. But see, what happens is when we start struggling, when we start suffering, we get a little selfish, don't we? But see, you don't know. Maybe the Lord has a purpose for your suffering. There's always a purpose for it. But you don't know how the Lord is going to use that suffering that you're going through to reach somebody else, to edify someone else. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 on verse 8. For we know that if our earthly house, our body, 
of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God and house not made with hands. See, the, the, the uh, spiritual body. Okay? He's talking about the natural body, this skin suit, and the spiritual body, like our Lord had, that can walk through walls and stuff like that. Eats because they want to eat, not because we need to eat. Okay? Let's continue. Yes, let me read that again. Okay? For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a, a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan. Amen. Don't we, brother, sister? Being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we but be clothed upon. That we receive that body that's never going to die. That's no pain. What is he saying? That we be clothed upon. Hey, get us out of here, Lord. Okay? That mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the capital S spirit. Capital S spirit denoting the Lord himself. And you and I, if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you came to him on his terms, the cross. You didn't boot the door out of the way and say you are when you're not. Okay? You are sealed until the day of redemption. And the Holy Ghost is that seal. And the Lord is that spirit. He seals you with himself. Okay? Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. And what did we read again in John chapter 12? In John chapter 12, verse 25, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it to keep it unto life eternal. Verse 26, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. You have to die to yourself. It's not about you. Your sufferings... Though it's a consequence of your own action or whatever it is you're going through, it's not always about you. It might be about you to get you to repent, but there again, it's not about you. You realize that, right? The redemption of the purchased possession is God's mercy. It's His grace, His mercy. Yes, but it's all about Him to the praise of whose glory? His glory, not yours. You, you remember that, right? And you know, we through suffering can sometimes turn that into some perverse glorification of ourselves. Yeah. They call it the martyr complex. But yeah, knowing, while, knowing we are always con therefore we are always confident Knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. These Christians was like, well, I, I don't want to go anywhere yet. I, life, I am, life is great. I got millions in the bank. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to worry about my bills. My, my fridge is always full. Yada, yada, look, I don't want to. I, life is great. You're not saved. Give me a break. If you're, if you're hunky-dory down here, see, that's Satan's trade-off. Your best life now. This ain't your best life now if you're saved. But if you're not, it's like I say to my enemies. You know, smoke that cigarette there, buddy. Yeah, may hey, you, punk, you little jerk. Make another 200 channels today. Go ahead. Live it up. And I hope your father, the devil's treating you better than anyone. This is the best life you're going to get. Amen. 
Therefore, like, okay, let's read this again. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. By faith, not by sight. Not the, well, I keep the law, I do that. You're not saved, shut up, go away. Okay? We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. And see, others are groaning too. But see, what they're groaning for, they're groaning for that Savior, that, that uh, horse to come out uh, having uh, a crown on his head and having an arrow, uh, a bow with no arrows. Okay? Yeah, they're looking for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Romans chapter 8, verses 19 on to verse 25. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. His purpose, not yours. Okay? Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. If you're saved. Obviously. This is, taught, this is for saved people. Okay? For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Yes, everything groaneth. We, the church of the living God, we want to go home. We wanted to go home yesterday. The lost people. They want their savior. Like King Charles III in that video where he talks about, uh, he makes reference to that man of sin, the son of perdition. He does. Okay? That trillion should be for him or it, whatever some guy said in a comment. It's shaky. But he couldn't deny that, yes, King Charles was making a reference to that man of sin, the son of perdition. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> okay? Hey, at least the king of England is open that he's uh, serving uh, Satan, right? Here in America, our people like to pretend that they're serving the true God. They're not. Okay? <laughs> Remember, England is the lesser of two evils between if you're comparing America and England. Yes, you British Israelites, I'll give you that. Yours is the lesser than to, of two evils, okay? Uh, don't let the door hit you in the butt on the way out, okay? But, all right, let's continue. Uh, where are we? Okay. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the, creat because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, capital S, himself. Okay? Meaning that seal, the Lord himself. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. Hey! 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 You spoke against using the word. Why do you still use the word? Well, it's not a big deal. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Only when you decide it is, right? But verse 23, he's talking about the redemption of the purchase possession. Verse 24. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Because we walk by faith, not by sight. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. And see, someone like Mark the Messenger and those likes who are keeping the law, they're doing something visible. They're walking by sight, not by faith. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Oh, I, I know a lot of the brethren are suffering. I know it. But see, 
what keeps this going is when I get emails and this keeps me going uh, like a dear brother telling me about how the Lord is giving him how the Lord is working through him and showing him the true the true meaning and understanding of Romans 8.28 you can quote that all day till you're chartreuse in the face until you live it you ain't going to understand it or about a sister who's just every day dealing with lost people but yet through her testimony of living and sister by the way thank you for your question that will be answered accordingly I have not ignored you that's a great question that will be answered accordingly okay I will get to that don't worry I haven't forgotten about you or ignored you okay but to hear how the Lord is using her and that's in the situation how my best friend how the Lord is working through him. You don't know how the Lord has used you in the eyes of those lost people who have saw you, brother. My young brother from Croatia tells me how the Lord is working through him. That keeps... And see, there are some charismatic idiots out there who calls that boasting. No, 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 no. It's not... It's, yeah, it's boasting the Lord, not themselves. You didn't never knew the difference there, Jack. But see, my young brother from Croatia tells me about how the Lord is working through him and what the Lord is doing around him. I, we love, I share it with my wife, we love to hear that. It's like, glory to God. Uh, uh, my brother from New Jersey, how he's, uh, and his grandson, my, my brother from North Dakota, how the Lord is providing for him. Okay? We live for that. My, my brother from Iowa, or I don't, I'm sorry if I messed that up. Hearing how the Lord is giving him victory. that We love that. We live for that. To see the Lord at work. And you do not know how the Lord is working in your life. And how he is working through you. As a testimony unto others. Philippians chapter 1. Verses 21 on to verse 30. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Amen. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. <laughs> yeah! But look at this. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And some of these idiots is like, well, that's being prideful. I, I don't know how the Lord is using me. He has given me a small taste through brethren of what he has done through what he has called me to do. But see, he doesn't let me know a lot because if he did, knowing the pride problem that I struggle with, it goes straight to my head. And you got a whole example of people onto whom that has happened to because thousands or millions are reached. Shut up. God, it goes right to their head. And for that reason, the Lord doesn't show me that and praise him for it. But see, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. How so? I don't know. We don't know how the Lord is going to use us. And if he makes us privy to how he has used us, that's a privilege. Not to be taken and gone to your head and you puff up yourself. Okay? You don't know. You'll know at the judgment seat with your rewards. But you don't know. That ought to suffice you. Because God has a plan for your life. His plan. What if, he's, what if your whole life in Christ has led up to that very moment that you are in right now, in your suffering, in your torment, in your misery, that you're like, Lord, come on. But what's happening around you? It's like the Lord, how the Lord called the guy with the, the, the pails on his shoulder with the two buckets. The Lord's like, okay, I want you to carry this water from here up the hill every day for the rest of your life. That's what I called you to do. He starts out at the bottom with the buckets full of water. And then when he gets up to the top, they're half empty. And then he, he does that every day. That's what the Lord called him to do. To start at the bottom with buckets of water full on his shoulder. You know, walk up the hill. And when he gets up there, they're half empty. 
uh, almost all the way empty. And then he's like, Lord, okay, you've called me to do this. I'm doing it. And I start out with waterfall, and then I go up the mountain, up the hill, and then the buckets are almost empty, and I don't see anything. What? 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 And Lloyd's like, hey, come here. Look at them buckets. And then the guy looks, and there, there were holes in those buckets. And then the Lloyd's like, hey, look, you know that path you were wa look, uh, walking along? Look at on the sides of that path where the buckets were dangling over. And then the guy looks, and it's like, wow. All those flowers. I see flowers, yeah. So he carrying the buckets full of water, by the time he got up, he was watering besides him, but he didn't see it. Hence the thumbnail. You don't know, brother, sister. You don't know. You know what we need to do? We need to Stop our murmuring and go on as the Lord has called us. Ow. Ow. Yeah. I want the redemption to, of the purchase of possession to happen right now. But who wasn't of the church of God yesterday who is today? And God ha does have a purpose for your life. Yes, he does. Christianity has trivialized it and turned it to revolve around you. But it's about the Lord. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. It's not about you. It's about other people. It's not about you. It's about the Lord. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith. That your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Sanctification. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. These, these attacks are meant to come. It, might, it means that you're doing something right when the enemies attack you and make ridiculous, stupid videos against you on a hundred different channels trying to override the algorithms, <laughs> okay? Uh, or people attack you outside in public. It means you're doing something right. Now, granted, some because you are a jerk in your, in your personality, that's... No. You live according to this, and that's just going to come naturally. Okay? Okay? You speak the truth of Scripture. Oh, the enemies are going to abound. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. Or you're suffering with your million dollar condo in Wisconsin and your million dollar house in Arizona, you Christian hypocrite! Oh, 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 you're suffering with all your multitude of properties, with your mansions and your swimming pools and your abundance of vehicles, you snob. Yeah, yeah, you're really suffering. Yeah, yeah. What Christianity did today forgot to renew your subscription? Well, mommy and daddy cut off your credit, something there, little boy? That's what Christianity is about. Not suffering for the cause of Christ, but suffering to gain your worldly means through the genie in the bottle that they call Jesus Christ. Having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here to be in me. Okay? And and Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 6. That really hurt when I slapped myself. But I need it. 
So do you. It's not about you. It's about Christ. It's about Christ. And be careful you don't glorify yourself and your sufferings. Because remember, saints, absolute suffering reveals, and absolute suffering reveals absolutely. You want to sink in submarine? Can you praise the Lord when you go homeless? Can you praise the Lord when he allows the, the devil to take everything away from you? Can you praise him? Or can you only praise him because he's doing good? I know so many of these Christians with their money, their millions, and their swift spank account that goes bunk. They're like, oh no, what do I do? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 on verse 6. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comfort us, comforteth us in all our tribulation. Here's the purpose, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. My mother died in 2017 and went to hell. My best friend's mother is going to die and go to hell. And because of the experience I went through, the Lord has allowed me to be onto my best friend a source of comfort because I've been through what he's going through. Same with you, brother. Same with you, sister. The Lord will put you through something and then someone of the Church of the Living God, the Lord will put in your life. It's like, hey, that. And you got to remember Job's friends, too. You always got to remember Job's friends who did good when they saw that his suffering was great. They, they kept their mouths shut and were just there. But what happens? They, they opened up their mouths and then they started to accuse Job. Okay? When someone's suffering, even though you've been through the same thing or similar... Remember Job's three friends and their example. They screwed it all up when they started speaking. Okay? Speak when spoken to. Give when asked upon. Otherwise, shut up! Some of the best uh, ways of comfort you can be there for a brother or sister. Never forget Job's three friends. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. We're not alone in our suffering, brethren. I'm struggling. You're struggling. I'm suffering. You're suffering. We're all suffering. You're not alone. But you think you are, huh? Maybe in your own head sometimes. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not... Uh, is that what we are going to read to? Oh, yeah. We read a little bit farther. But And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. And of course... Romans chapter 12 talks about, you know, being of one mind. Okay? Weep with them who weep and uh, rejoice with them who do rejoice. Okay? Because you don't know, brethren. You don't know why the Lord is allowing you to go through what you're going through. But he has a purpose for it. His purpose. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 3 on verse 16. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, for the prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. 
Let love be with this, without dissimulation. Abhor extreme hate for that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. And there is none good but who? God. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love among the church of the living God. There are those who are truly saved, born again, converted, who I don't like, and they don't like me. But if they were to come to me for help or for prayer, I would be there for them. Even though I don't like them as uh, who they are and how they act, if they are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, they are my brother or sister, I love them, and I would be there for them. I might not like you. You might not like me. But if they came to me, Brad, I know you and I don't like each other. Could you pray for me? Yeah, I'll pray for you. I don't like you, but you're my brother. Or my sister. Okay? Yeah. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. You don't go to the lost for comfort. Okay? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Business, slothful in business, whatever business he has called you to. What business is that? And having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. And read the list. Okay? That's what he's talking about. Okay? Doesn't mean also that you be uh, slothful in your carnal work, whatever, if that's what he's called you to. Okay? All right? But rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. Bless them which, which persecute you. Bless and curse not. How do you do that? By living a godly example according to the scriptures. The enemies want to draw, drag you down to their level. And the way you bless them who persecute you. Give them scripture. Live. Live scripture. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. How many of these big shot Christians would go to a homeless person and talk with them? How many of you Christians would buy them that? Yeah, you don't outright give a homeless person money. No, you don't. No, you don't, because you don't know how they're going to... Let's go, let's go get something to eat. Bring them a sandwich. My wife and I, we, you know, we've done that before. Bring homeless people sandwiches. Talk with them. Provide for their need. Don't give them money because you don't know if they're going to go buy drugs or booze or cigarettes or whatever. That's true. But how many of these big shot Christians willing to buy a homeless person a cheeseburger and sit with them? But no, they think more highly of themselves. Hey, what if they happen to be homeless and of a different kindred than you? Oh, oh. how many of you of Japheth would buy a hamburger for a homeless Hamite and sit with them? How many of you chosen Hamites would buy a homeless Japhethite or Shemite a burger and sit with them and talk with them? Romans 15, verses 13 and 14. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye, all, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. That's what this video is about. Okay? Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 on to verse 32. And we as the church of the living God, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Uh -huh. Brad, you blew it for this video. Uh, I was talking about devils, lost people. But when it comes on to my brethren and sisters, absolutely. And also grace unto the hearers, those lost. See, 
when I say the things I do, I'm addressing those who have made their choice and are serving Satan by choice. Okay? Those who have made their choice and serve Satan, they are my enemies. We are to hate them with perfect hatred. You serve the Christians, you, you're a Christian, and serve the Christ that is offered to you in the church building, you're my enemy, because that's not the Christ of the Scriptures. We are to hate them with perfect hatred. I know a lot of you have a problem with that. That's just God-honest truth. Okay? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And who has Christ actually forgiven? Those who come to him on his terms. Okay? In Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Verses 12 on to verse 17. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, elect because you've went to the elected way of the cross, the way that God chose, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is self sacrifice charity is not liberty and liberty is not charity they are two different things our liberty as the church of God is derived from Christ's charity yes but they are two different things some lying little devil punk tried to tell you that they're one and the same they're not he did it, yea, hath God said, right before your face. Okay? They're two different things. Charity is self-sacrifice. It's not about you. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful in all things. In everything, give thanks. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Fear the Lord. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Yes, because we are ambassadors for Christ. It's not about us. You don't know how the Lord is going to use that suffering that you're going through, brother, sister, right now for someone else to see it or to edify someone else. You don't know. You don't know. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 unto verse 11. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, which is the time of Jacob's trouble, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Talking again about the redemption of the purchased possession. Those who are saved are going to go up before the time of Jacob's trouble. You Christians, yes, you Christians that get left behind, you are going to go through the great tribulation. Bravo, it doesn't have to be that way. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep with him, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And let us not forget, brethren. Second Timothy chapter 3, I believe it is. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Ah. Uh, Yea, and all that will live godly. How do you live godly? Live according to the scriptures. 
Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Then, in verse 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Who taught you? You learn, yes, from a man, but through that man is the Holy Ghost teaching you through that man? Or is he just another ite? And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Bible. <gasps> oh, excuse me! The Holy Scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Verses 11 on to verse 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope. And who is the blessed hope? Jesus Christ. He is the blessed hope. He is the resurrection and the life. Okay? And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. There's a purpose in your pain. Brother, you can't say that everything you have done is vanity. Because you don't know how Lord the Lord is going to use what you have done. That testimony of what you have done in others. You don't know if there is going to be a Saul present while the world is stoning you with stones. You don't know. The Lord might have called you to carry two pails of water up a hill. Full at the bottom and half empty at the top. And then you're like, I don't see anything. Then the Lord's got to be like, hey, look around you. There were holes in them buckets. Look at the flowers that come up from you going up that path. You don't know. You don't know. And let's end it. Let's end it. On this. Let's end it on this. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Did I write down the wrong one? Let me see. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 on to verse 4. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, who is our comforter, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, capital S, if any bowels and if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like minded, having the same love being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. It's not about you. The world doesn't revolve around you. Hi, the world doesn't revolve around you. Your pain may be to bring you to repentance, yes. But it's not about you. God has a purpose for you. His purpose, not yours. Verse 17 on to verse 21 in uh, Philippians 2. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. 
But I trust in the, in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of, com of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, the true God of the Scriptures. To them who are the call, truly saved, born again, converted, went the way of the cross according to His purpose. I suffer a lot of what I'm suffering as a consequence of the poor care of the body that the Lord has given me. That's my consequence. And I suffer for it. It's my fault. But also through this, the Lord has helped to, uh, you know, others who are also going through this stuff as well. The Lord whatever situation, whatever suffering you're going through, unless it's self-inflicted and it's a mean of chastisement, even then, even in that, there's a purpose that relates unto God and His calling. Your labor is not in vain. Good God! Brother, sister, your labor is not in vain. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Okay? That's going to be it for this video. Thank you to those of you who pray for us and help us. We need your prayers. Oh, we need your prayers. Pray for one another because so many of the brethren are suffering right now and going through hardships, bad health, Tribulation and anguish. Pray for the brethren. Pray for the brethren. Find out how you can pray for them. Ask the Lord. Reach out to that brother. Reach out to that sister. Pray for one another. Be there for one another. Prefer one another, not the lost world. Okay? going to get this video uploaded. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this may be the last video on this channel for a while. It all depends on what YouTube is going to do at 9.30, between 9.30 and 10.30 uh, Central Daylight Savings Time, which is 7.30 to 8.30 and California time. If anything, again, like I said at the beginning of this video, if anything happens on this channel, all uploads will be on Least of All Fellowship until whatever happens, okay? Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.